Welcome to the newly branded Strange Form. It turns out that there were already too many things in the box, and Morgan Freeman was getting weird about it. But under the new banner, and the immortal words of Pinhead, we have such sights to show you. Starting with Malavestros. Unfortunately, out of the shipping box, the one thing that you notice immediately is that the package feels extremely light and flimsy. Definitely not the standard size, one six scale packaging you're used to in this price range. And though the artwork is nice, the material feels like something you would grab off the shelf at Walmart. And I know this is not simply a 3-0 issue, as there is a world of difference when you compare this packaging to the likes of the species Sill figure that sports thick cardboard, foam inlays, and a magnetic flap. The quality to price ratio is going to be a large point of contention through this entire video. Everybody wants to command Hot Toys prices until it comes time to produce Hot Toys quality. Inside the figure is placed in simple clamshell packaging. On the top, the instruction booklet and warranty. Inside, the first thing you'll notice is that the accessories are rather sparse. There is no stand or base, and the only other hands that the figure comes with are designed to be used solely with accessories. The figure itself is very light, which on one hand helps with posing, as he does hold his position rather well, which you will see later in the video. He comes with one book-holding hand and two scroll-holding hands, one for heaven and one for hell, as well as the heaven and hell scrolls, a closed rolled scroll, and the Court of the Dead Chronicle of the Underworld book, as well as an extra piece of cape with tiny hooks that you get to attach yourself. And last and probably least, he also comes with two extra wrist joints. Previous to this offering, Sideshow Toys released three different... 1-6 scale Court of the Dead figures through TB League, two different Cure figures, and one Gethsemane. I will touch on this more later, but suffice to say, the TB League figures offer better quality at a much lower price. I'm not going to say that this figure isn't interesting, and I was really excited to see 3-0 team up with Sideshow as their figures often justify the price tag, and at the price they are charging for these, I was hoping to see a scaled down version of the statues with a fair amount of fine detail and intricate paint applications. Before I get into the true light review, I wanted to show what can be done with the figure with a few props and proper lighting. Having fetched a few fireproof stone logs from my fireplace, I was able to breathe quite a bit of life into this figure, and though extremely light, I will say that the joints do hold their tension rather well. It's easy to get him into multiple poses that would be impossible with many other 1-6 scale figures without using a stand. Where the detail is good, it's very good. Where the detail is bad, it's somewhat around standard McFarlane or NECA quality. That is to say, not terrible, but definitely not worth $250. We will get more into this during the close-up session. As for the paint applications, in some places they are quite nice, especially around the face and the stitching around the fool's hat. Other places, the paint is somewhat sloppy and impressionistic. What do I mean by impressionistic? It's a term I've used before in my videos. It is when a figure looks great at arm's length, and yet somewhat sloppy close up. As if they were trying to paint form without fine detail. Much like how an impressionist painting brings together the illusion of form and detail at distance. This style of painting is something one would expect from a $12 to $30 action figure that was painted by tiny little underpaid hands in a large damp factory that smells strangely of mothballs and despair. As a matter of fact, every time I get an action figure at that price range, whose paint applications are exquisite, I want to find that little urchin and help him get his mother the medication she so desperately needs to make it through the next winter. As for the kid who gave me a cross-eyed Batman, you're on your own. Anyway, I digress. I want to like this figure, as I would really like to see a full Court of the Dead 1-6 line come to fruition. 
Sideshow keeps playing around at different sizes and mediums, but beyond their one-quarter scale statues, they've never really gotten beyond three figures. Case in point, I would like to see more of Sideshow and Pure Arts collaboration. What I don't want to see is Sideshow release only Malavestros and the Reaper General and leave us with just two random figures, and not even the most important figures in the storyline. I will say that these figures display nicely next to TB League's entries, something I will show later in the video. As I mentioned before, the head and hat are well painted. The eyes and teeth, however, are a bit flat and need some gloss to make them look more organic. There is a lot of detail around the collar, but the braid just below the collar looks like someone twirled a Tootsie Roll. The collar looks like it was quickly brush washed and then left to dry, which again looks fine from a few feet away, but definitely plays like a toy when up close. The arm gauntlets are actually quite sloppy and have a lot of black overpaint. Same goes for the braid around the belt, and there is quite a bit of overpaint in the gold areas and the Freddy Krueger soles around the waist are extremely strawberry candy pink, which makes for good contrast, but also looks a little silly. And as you can see, the belt loses a lot of detail as it stretches out from the middle, and is even worse on back. The skulls on the knees play like somebody put orange paint slopped on top of them. If they were going to skimp on weathering, I wish they would have left them just bone colored. The stitches around the boot and the copper discoloration look good. I don't know why, but the hands actually offend me. After looking at the TB League figures, I am really disappointed by how slapdash the paint on Malavestris' hands are. And there are injection seams absolutely everywhere, not just on the hands, but all over the figure. This to me is completely unacceptable for a 200 plus figure. At that price range, you should be sanding down those seams and paying attention to where the damn rings are on the fingers. The book is okay, but suffers from the same overpaint issues as everywhere else. And for some reason, it opens left to right. That is to say that the book itself does not open, but the cover is on the wrong side to be consistent with the comic book or other previous entries. Maybe it's to entertain some Japanese souls. Now this is probably only a point of contention for me, but I don't know why they put the hell in the right hand and the heaven in the left hand, because hell is the left hand path. But I guess as above, so below. I'm actually thinking of repainting the heaven and hell scrolls, as these are more like accessories you would find with the old school McFarlane toys, I mean pre-Dark Ages. Which is a shame, because with less sloppy paint applications and more fine detail, this would have been an incredible opportunity for display. And I have one more issue with these. The display hands have pegs in them that the scrolls hold fast to. They, however, do not clasp around the scroll and are fairly open-palmed, causing the effect to look more like the scrolls are simply stuck to the flat of his hands, rather than being gripped. The closed scroll, however, looks fairly good and the paint applications are more spot on than the other accessories. The jingle bells on the ends of the fool's hat are a bit mushy and difficult to discern what the details are supposed to mean. And that brings me to my point. There are details far smaller than this on the Pure Arts collaboration, and those figures retail for under $100. Yes, they are slightly smaller in scale and don't have the articulation, but they put quite a bit of excellence into the product for the price as you can get three of these for the cost of 130 Malavestros. As for articulation, this is where the figure actually shines. He has full rotation at the elbows, wrists, as well as the shoulders, and the joints are tight without feeling breakable. The head and neck rotate, as well as pelvic and chest articulation, allowing for forward, back, side-to-side, -side, and twisting motions. The knees and thighs are ratchet joints and easily stay in position and the feet have full rotation at the ankle, but there is a massive missed opportunity in not giving him any sort of display base, or at least a stand. For a figure at this price range, you shouldn't have to go scurrying to Hobby Lobby just to get him to stand on one foot. Though I have reservations about this figure, he does look nice displayed next to the lower priced yet superior TV League Gethsemane. In the end, I think it would be difficult to suggest this one at that price. I would be more than willing to suggest this one at $150.
but coming up on $300 with tax and shipping, in the future I would like to see them do better. In the end, I think purchasing this one comes down to supporting the franchise in the 1-6 format over the quality of the individual piece itself. What do you think? Are you willing to put up with these quality control issues at that price? Just to have 1-6 scale Court of the Dead figures? Let me know in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this strange form, and will help support the channel by hitting the like button and subscribing. And as always, never stop collecting.